hello <laughs> hello everybody hello and welcome back to my youtube channel if this is your first time you must i welcome my name is blessing fatima and this is youth with a difference making a difference in the world so if it is your first time you must highly welcome to this youtube channel so today guys i wanted to do this video i don't know what the title is going to be about i don't know if it's going to be truth about panicking christians or fact about panicking christians but it's not the old thing is about panicking christians um i didn't just wake up and do this video out of my inspiration it was some it has been something that has been really bothering me and most of these questions have been asked to me personally and some people think these like like these things and i'm just going to tell you guys if they're true or if they're false so um i hope you watch this video to the end and you bless one way or the other okay okay so i have it in this little journal of mine i wrote it down like a few weeks ago <laughs> It's not much, but I just hope that you get your answers or maybe like you have that kind of assumptions about Bonnegan Christians, which of course I'm, I'm going to try to rectify it. Okay. All right. So the first thing is that we are perfect. Well, don't get me wrong. Our heavenly father. What is this? Okay. Our heavenly father in heaven expects every Christian, every human being that he has died for to be perfect. But he knows that we're a human being and that is why he made his grace sufficient for us. But people around us think that we're perfect. We don't have things that we're struggling with. Like we're just perfect. Like we're saints. Like we're angels from heaven just fall down. Let me just remind you guys we're flesh and blood and we fall short every single time. So we're not all perfect. We're striving to perfection. So that whole mentality of people you should just... You should just stop it we are not perfect okay we're human beings we fall short we sin against god we, we we go through struggles okay so we're not all perfect although our every father expects us to be perfect that is why we're striving towards perfection okay all right so the next thing is we ask god for everything we do i think this thing this is somehow a little bit unbiased but i'm going to try to put it and about your way we wherein i don't want to give the wrong impression to anybody out there so this thing about asking god for everything okay god expects us to ask him for everything in the book of march you say ask and you shall be given seek and you shall find knock and the door shall be opened but like <laughs> is it literally everything that we ask god for okay like like there are major things that we ask god for like god i want to marry like god direct me god i want to have children how many children should i have but this this whole thing of um okay god i want to i want to brush my teeth with colgate or should i use aloe vera paste or should i rub vaseline on my lips that like you people think this extraordinary thing like even even when it's time to sleep like god can i sleep like <laughs> that is the extreme of what you people like i've I've been with some like people like people like he asks for everything like even when the when you want to drink water he asks no it's not like that it's not like that no <laughs> we also have some choices because god is not forcing us to just like obey him if god god has that power let me just let me just say if god has that power for you to do everything at his will but he has given us the will to make decisions according to his will. Just trying to understand, okay? He has given us the free will to make decisions at our will to please his will. So he's not forcing us to do anything that we don't want to do. So this whole thing of like, it's too extra. People think that we're too extra, okay? So yes, we ask God for things like, God, I want to go out today. What is this? What should I do? But I, like this extra thing that i want to have my bath okay can i use liquid soap or bath soap like <laughs> no that's not that that's not that extreme okay although some people do it like i just don't want to talk based on my experience but some people do it like um we're having a conversation with some of my brother and they were telling me like some people have reached to a particular um spiritual level where in, like they want to wear clothes and they're like they'll be like like the holy spirit has become their friend so they'll be like um Holy Spirit, can I wear this clothes to go out? Or Holy Spirit, can I do this? Or Holy Spirit, but that's not that's not for all. That's not literally for everybody. No, it has to reach to that extent. Okay. So the third thing, we don't have problems. I think people outside 
think that oh everybody that is born again doesn't have problem because like they pray they go to church frequently so like they literally don't have problem but we do because let me just tell you the moment you declare that i want to be holy okay i want to serve god in righteousness and holiness satan is going to be at your back he's going to be at your front he's going to be at your head it's going to be everywhere you are so i think we have most of the challenges like Satan will not leave you. So we have problems. We have challenges. I think we have the greatest challenges more than the people that, that are outside of Jesus. Like, Satan, you're already in his book. So, like, he doesn't worry about you. But you that, that is trying to stay away from him, trying to live a perfect life, you are first. When you open his book, he, you are the first to be on his book. So we have problems, okay? We have problems. Um, the first thing is our pastors choose who we marry. Um, this thing that happened to me a lot, like a lot, guys. Even the time that I was in school, um, in, in high school, but I mean, in the, I'm in the university now, but the time I was in school, um, there are people that were, oh, when we finish school, I'll marry you. I will, I will tell them, okay, go and meet my pastor. They'll be like, your pastor? Are you not the one that's going to sit at the house? I know where he's going to marry. So I'm not going to marry a pastor. I'm going to marry you. So are you going to marry me or not? So people have that own mentality that it's a pastor that is choosing for us. So if if you bring somebody to your pastor, your pastor say, no. So like your marriage is over. Let me just clear this. Let me just clear the air on this particular topic, okay? Please, Holy Spirit, give me wisdom so that I don't give like wrong information to anybody. Okay. So um, first of all, let me just answer the question clearly and very simple. Our pastors don't choose who we marry. They guide us. Like, like I said, God doesn't force you to do his will. He guides you, wants you to do your will according to his will, okay? So that's exact um, same thing um, as your pastor, okay? He wants you to marry who you want, but to please God. And we, 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 we think that, okay, we have that reference that our pastors are like God on earth. Don't get me wrong, like after God, there are spiritual fathers, okay? So, like, we can't do anything because marriage is spiritual, it's not only physical, it's spiritual. So, we can't just do something like spiritual and not in, involve our spiritual fathers. And we think that, like, they have control over us in a sense that they're spiritual heads. So, whatever thing that's happened to us spiritually, like, they communicate it to God. So, like, we need to invite them in these things and marriage is a very major thing it's a ministry so like we need to invite our pastors but let me just tell you if you you, you find somebody that you really like and you don't want your pastor to intervene and you just you don't like you don't have like it's not a it's not a bad thing trust me it's not a bad thing if like like your pastor says, okay i want brother joseph okay i want to marry brother joseph as i am right now or i want to brother i want to marry brother joshua like Pastor say, uh, my dear sister, let's wait up. He say, okay, pastor, you know what? I like him and there's nothing you can do about it. So I'm going to go ahead. There's nothing your pastor can do. As, as long as your parents have agreed, like, okay, you know, you like him and he likes you. Okay, carry on with the wedding. But like, if your pastor say no, there's nothing. There's nothing. Like, if you say no, like, there's nothing your pastor can do. So let's, let's clear that. Like, I hope this particular thing has cleared the air, like, Apostles don't choose who we marry, okay? Who we marry is our choice. We just need counsel from them and guidance from them so we don't marry the wrong people, okay? But you don't choose for us. Get that, okay? So the next, we think everybody else is going to help. I think this is like a vice versa. There are some people that, like, this is one thing I hate so much, the whole aspect of being judgmental, okay? Like, you don't you don't just wake up and think like everybody should be like everybody's going to hell or everybody is like this or everybody should no no like this whole mentality about like um i'm perfect i'm better than everybody people should get that thing off their mind okay we don't think everybody's going to hell although there are some people that think like that but in my perspective i don't think everybody's going to hell because going to heaven is dependent on God because he says I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy and I will choose who I will choose okay so everything is in his hands 
But that does not mean that you should not strive towards perfection because our Heavenly Father in heaven demands perfection from us. In Hebrews 12, verse 14, that we should be holy even as our Heavenly Father is holy. Okay? So the aspect of going to heaven, it is God that has the choice. But you have the role to play to be like a heaven candidate. Okay? So this aspect of everybody's going to hell, we think everybody's going to hell. Yes, some people think like that, but it's not majority. Okay, so it's not like all oh, Christian people like think, oh, everybody's going to help. No, that's the one's perspective and you should rectify it as well. So the next thing, we are too good to come in with everybody else. <laughs> okay, so when I was writing these things, some of these things are true. Some of these things are not, okay? So this thing is we are too good to communicate with people. Let me just clear the air on this as well. We're not too good to communicate with people. We're just being careful and being like wise because Jesus said that we should be wise as serpent, okay? He's not saying that we should be a serpent, but we should be as wise as serpent. If a serpent knows that like there's somebody here that would it will not come there. And so um basically we we don't we don't feel good, we don't feel retail or we don't feel perfect than everybody else that we don't want to come in come in with people we're just being careful about the friends that we communicate with because the bible says that um evil evil communication corrupts good manners so you become the people that you start to commune with if you start to come in so much with smokers you start to smoke so that is why we're being careful about the people we commune with it's not that we're too good to commune with people okay no we're just as natural as you, we're flesh and blood as you are. We're just trying to be really careful. I'm trying to say that generally for every Christian, okay? So we're just trying to be careful. No, we're not good or we're not perfect or we're not holier than everybody else. We're just trying to be careful because, like, show me your friend and I'll tell you who you are. So that is the whole scenario there, okay? So the next is we don't make mistakes. We do. We do make mistakes. I make mistakes every single day. That is why this time say, for all I've sinned and falling short of the glory of God. Even though David was known as the man after God's own heart. Look at what he did. Okay? Um, so we do make mistakes. We do make mistakes and we fall short and we lack like there are a lot of things. We, we're not perfect. Like I said, we make mistakes. We sin against God. Yeah, so <laughs> it's done that. Okay, we're working, blah blah blah, and everything is now we make mistakes, okay? We do make mistakes. Alright. So the next is we all are poor and it is sin to be rich. <laughs> it's not a sin to be rich, okay? As I'm here, I'm going to college. I want to be somebody, and why is that? Because I want to make money, I want to live a comfortable life. So it's not a sin to be rich. And we're not all poor. Okay, so I think <laughs> I think this is one of the things that are really discouraging people about becoming born again Christians and becoming holy believers because they think the sooner you become rich, uh, the sooner you give your life to Jesus, you become poor. Because you see people like they start to do restitution. I'll try by the way so God to bring that up because well, restitution. So they'll try to uh, make restitutions if like they went to the university in the wrong way or they got the job in the wrong way. Like, oh, I need to do my restitution. I need to tell the people that like this thing that I went in with is wrong and all of that. And like, okay, if if the people say, okay, you know what? Since you have done it, so we're going to fire you. People are scared. <laughs> so the sooner you become... um holy you become a christian you become poor the bible says that we are priesthood we're royal priesthood we're we're amazing people okay so we're not poor and god expects us to live a righteous and happy life like he says in the i think it's third gen that has been my favorite scripture for this year beloved i wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health even as thou so prosper so god us God wants us to prosper spiritually, physically, mentally, facially, whatever illy you can find, you can figure out. God wants us to prosper in every aspect. So, um, no, 
when I'm poor. <laughs> and it's not a sin to be rich. It's how you get the money. That is the sin, okay? Yeah. So we're just normal people. We're like you. The only difference is that we're trying to please God in the right way. Way. that is the only different but you breathe the same here we breathe the same here you breathe, we eat the same food you, you eat we drink the same water we just literally live like you live but the only difference is that we're walking towards pleasing god so i just hope that you got you got some um message from this and you learned something from this that will bless you and yeah so thank you guys so much for watching this video and if you haven't subscribed subscribe so that you'll be updated wherever i post another video thank you to all my always returning subscribers i love you guys so much thank you thank you thank you and see you guys in the next video till then have a beautiful and wonderful and an amazing day and jesus loves you so